والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم الله نزل احسن الحديث كتابا متشابها كتابا متشابها مثانيه تقشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم الى ذكر الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته welcome to another episode of our series the sciences of the Quran. This is your host, Yasir Qadhi. In today's episode, we're going to discuss one of the most fascinating topics about our holy book, and that is the compilation of the Quran. Muslims are always happy and proud of the fact that their book is the only preserved book of, uh, uh, of the scriptures of God. That this book, the Qur'an, is not like the Old Testament or the New Testament. It is not like the Gitas of the Hindus uh, or the Puranas of the other religions. This is a book that we know for a fact that has been preserved for the last 14 centuries, ever since its revelation. And yet many Muslims are unaware of how it has been preserved. So in this episode and in our next episode, we will inshaAllah ta'ala summarize the process of the compilation of the Qur'an. And rem remember that Allah has promised that the Qur'an will be preserved. In the most famous verse in this regard, in uh, Surah number 15, verse 9, Allah says, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ We have of a surety sent down this revelation, the Qur'an, and of a surety we are going to protect it, we are going to guard it. Therefore, anybody who claims that the Qur'an is not protected, that the Qur'an is not original, that the Qur'an has been tampered with, then such a person is simply not a believer in the Qur'an, i.e. he or she is not a Muslim. It is a fundamental requirement of our religion, if you want to be a Muslim, that you believe that the Qur'an has been protected because Allah clearly says so in the Qur'an. But we have historical proof for this as well. So there are a number of distinct stages of the compilation of the Qur'an, and we can summarize them in three stages. The first of these stages, how was the Qur'an compiled in the life of the Prophet ﷺ? The second is the compilation of Abu Bakr an, and the third is the compilation of Uthman an. These are the three primary stages. And all of the other Qur'ans that we have present, even to this day, they go back directly to the Uthmanic stage. So we need to talk about the preservation of the Qur'an, firstly, during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, secondly, the Abu Bakr compilation, and thirdly, the Uthmanic compilation. The Qur'an, in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, was preserved in two ways. The primary way it was preserved is through memorization. And this is because the Arabs were a illiterate Bedouin society. They did not have a, a, a cultural civilization with lots of written books. Rather, they had a civilization with lots of oral traditions. They would memorize their poetry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the nation that the Prophet ﷺ has been sent to is an illiterate, unlettered generation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah number 62 verse 2, he is the one who has sent amongst the illiterate peoples, the unlettered nations, a prophet from amongst them. Likewise, in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the, that the Nabi himself is a Nabi al ummi he himself is a Nabi who does not know how to read and write. And for us, this is a matter of pride. It is not a matter of embarrassment. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ did not need to learn how to read and write when he is communicating directly with Allah. The purpose of reading and writing is to increase your knowledge. But when you are communicating directly with Allah, you have no need for the works of other men. So in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ would memorize the Qur'an himself and the companions would listen to his recitation. Very early on, however, they also began to write down that recitation. And we have, for example, recorded in our historical works that Umar ibn al-Khattab, who converted to Islam around the sixth year of the message, i.e. seven years before the Hijrah, 
Umar ibn al-Khattab, how did he convert? His conversion story was that when he entered his sister's house, he saw them reading the Qur'an. So they had written down the Qur'an, a physical copy. And this is in the sixth year of the prophetic message. Therefore this shows us that very early on, the Qur'an had already begun to be written down. We also learn that the Prophet wasallam later on, especially in the Meccan era, uh, especially in the Madani era, he would actually command the Sahaba to write the Qur'an down. There are over 25 companions whose names we know that acted as secretaries to the Prophet who, whose job was to write down the revelation. And the primary secretary of the Prophet ﷺ was a young and intelligent man by the name of Zayd ibn Thabit. Zayd ibn Thabit was a neighbor of the Prophet ﷺ and he was a young and intelligent man. When the Prophet ﷺ came in Medina, he was still a teenager and he had memorized many of the surahs of the Qur'an and over the next few years he became one of those who had memorized the entire Qur'an and he became the most personal scribe of the Prophet ﷺ when it, with regards to the Qur'an. In fact, in one hadith in Sahih Bukhari, we read that when Allah revealed verse number 95 of surah number 4, the Prophet ﷺ said to the companions, call Zayd ibn Thabit for me and tell him to bring the, uh, the, the bones of uh, the, the, the camel and the ink that they used to write with. In those days, they did not have paper, by the way. They did not have paper. Paper came into the Muslim Ummah at the turn of the first century through uh, the Chinese. Chinese uh, prisoners of war had been captured by the Muslims uh, in the Battle of Tulun, and they were the ones who then introduced paper making to the Muslims. In the time of the Prophet and the companions, they would write the Quran on a number of items. The most common item was the uh, uh, was parched leather. They would also write the Quran on the bones of camels, especially the, the shoulder blade of the camel. This was a large flat bone that they would use. And they would also write it on uh, date palm leaves. They would make some type of uh, the equivalent of what we would call uh, papyrus in our time. Some type of papyrus they would make it and they would write on that. And so the Prophet wasallam would call Zayd ibn Thabit and he would dictate to him in front of him. He would dictate the verse and Zayd ibn Thabit would write that verse down. And so you can imagine that as these verses were written down, they would have scraps of paper, not paper, but scraps of, of parchment, scraps of material with various verses. And so Zayd ibn Thabit himself reported, during the lifetime of the Prophet wasallam, we used to compile the Qur'an from different scraps. We used to compile the Qur'an from different scraps. And so... In the lifetime of the Prophet wasallam, the Qur'an was written down bit by bit, piecemeal by piecemeal, but an entire Qur'an was not written down. The Qur'an, all of its entirety from Fatiha to Nas was not put in one book. Rather, every companion had certain portions that he, he or she wanted and they were not arranged in one book yet. Why didn't the Prophet wasallam compile the Qur'an in one book? Well, there are many reasons for this. Of them, there was no need to. There was no pressing need for the Prophet ﷺ to compile one book. Also, the Qur'an was still being revealed. And in fact, the last verses came down literally days before the death of the Prophet ﷺ. So there, it would not have been possible to write down a full book because it would not have been possible to add or subtract from that book at a later stage. Likewise, the arrangements of the verses and the surahs was not chronological. We will come to this later on. The Prophet ﷺ would sometimes take a verse that was revealed on one time and place it with a verse that was revealed way before that time. So the arrangement is not chronological. The Prophet ﷺ arranged it differently. Therefore, it was not possible to take scraps of paper. Sometimes a scrap of paper should have been inserted in the middle of a verse. That is what happened sometimes. And so the Prophet ﷺ did not command to compile an entire Qur'an. When the Prophet ﷺ passed away, the Qur'an existed in its entirety, written down on different parchments, different bones, but there was no one compilation. Who was the first person to do this? The first person to do this was none other than Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, the first companion of the Prophet ﷺ and the first Khalifa after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, within uh, a year of the death of the Prophet ﷺ, he had compiled an entire Qur'an, cover to cover, Fatiha to Nas. 
And this is the first time that the Qur'an is put in a book form, cover to cover. Now this Qur'an was compiled in the 12th year of the Hijrah, i.e. literally one year and a few months after the death of the Prophet wasallam, and it was done at the request of Umar ibn al-Khattab because what happened was that a certain battle occurred, the battle of Yamama, and in this battle which was fought against Musaylama, uh, the, the liar, the, the, the false prophet, a lot of the Hufad or the memorizers of the Qur'an died. And so Umar ibn al-Khattab came to Abu Bakr and said, O oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, O oh, uh, leader of, or, 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 of, the, of the faithful, O oh, Khalifa to Rasulullah, I am scared that if you don't compile the Qur'an in a book form, our Hufad will die one after the other and portions of the Qur'an will be lost. So why don't you compile it in a book form? So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was first hesitant, but Umar radiallahu an managed to convince him, and they both decided to put Zayd ibn Thabit in charge of the job. The same person whom the Prophet ﷺ had assigned to be his personal secretary. And so Zayd ibn Thabit began compiling these scraps from his own collection, and from the collection of all of the companions, and he required that anybody who bring this scrap or this bone or this that, that he was present when the Prophet ﷺ commanded to write it, that he heard it from the Prophet ﷺ, and also he required that the companions heard the Prophet ﷺ recite the verse, either in prayer or in another uh, location. So he required both oral memory and physical evidence. And of course, Zayd himself was a hafid. Zayd himself was a memorizer of the Quran, but in order to verify that everything was correct and sure, he then compiled the Quran based upon the unanimous consensus of all of the companions. So this was the first time the Quran was compiled and it was done within a year and a half of the death of the Prophet ﷺ by the most trusted companion of the Prophet ﷺ when it comes to uh, the, 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 the writing of the Quran, the closest secretary to the Prophet ﷺ, Zayd ibn Thabit, a young intelligent man who had memorized the Quran himself and who by the way was physically present when the Prophet ﷺ recited the Quran to Jibreel in its entirety the year of his death. Zayd ibn Thabit was sitting with him and he heard the entire Quran being recited. So Zayd ibn Thabit collectively, he could have done it singly but he didn't want to. He did it collectively from all of the companions. When all of the major companions were still alive, the, the, the first Mus'haf, the first collection of the Qur'an was done and this is called the recension of Abu Bakr. In our next episode, we'll talk about the compilation of Uthman and how it then evolved up until our times. Until then, I hope to see you in our next episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah nazzala ahsan al-hadith kitaban mutashabiha كتابا متشابها مثانية قشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله